We are 48 schools across 14 cities, but together we are one Shawnee mission, and this is our time to shine. Welcome to episode eight of Shiny Mission Mic'd Up. I'm Dr. Michelle Hubbard and I'm your host and we are so excited to be here this week for American Education Week. And I'm your co-host, Dr. Jeremy Higgins, and we really appreciate everyone listening in, whether you're a new listener, a returning listener, or a viewer. Uh, we're glad you're here for this especially special week. Absolutely. Um, it's a special week for a couple of reasons. Since we last were on the air, we've had a board election and we have some new board members and some returning board members so we're really excited that Jessica Hembry in the south and Jamie Borgman in the uh, northwest area will be returning to the board and additionally we have Mario Garcia from Shawnee Mission North and David Westbrook which is the at-large seat joining us starting in January the most exciting thing about our two new board members for me are that they're both Shawnee Mission grads that's awesome that's it awesome is. And, and, you know, with, with the board election, we also, you know, I know we spent some time talking about Brad and Sarah last time and, and thanking them for their service, but obviously their time is, is uh, coming to an end as well. I think it's really cool to see um, people returning to service that spent so many years getting served by all the amazing, amazing educators in the Shawnee Mission School District. So Yeah, and, and speaking of amazing educators, so this week, as you had mentioned, Dr. Hubbard, is, is American Education Week and obviously kind of a big deal for those of us in, in education. But this, this episode, we're gonna spend some time highlighting um, the amazing work that, that all of our educators do. So beyond just our teachers, but everyone that works within our school system. Uh, for, for our listeners, American Education Weeks gives everyone really the opportunity to honor each and every person um, that works so hard to ensure um, that quality education that, that each and every one of our Shawnee Mission students gets. So um, obviously, if, if you haven't seen this week um, on social media, we've been highlighting some of the, the amazing work that our educators have, have been doing. So uh, give that a follow. And it's also not too late to uh, just Give a, give a shout out and a thanks to someone who's made a difference. Maybe it's a current teacher, a former teacher, coach, uh, custodian, whoever it may be that's had an impact. Now's a perfect time to uh, thank that person for all the work they've done. I know there's some resources on the website, a uh, template that people can print out to write a thank you, an email, um, a phone call, a message, saying something in the pickup line, whatever it is, uh, just giving a shout out to everyone that works in our school this week. That's what American Education Week's all about. And I don't know, um, for me, it is just so rewarding to get that handwritten note or an email from a colleague from the past or even a teacher from the past. And so uh, it seriously takes five minutes to shout out somebody. So. I, I, I'm with you. Let's, yeah. let's all rally behind and do it. Do you have any shout outs for right now? I do actually. Um, since it's American Education Week, I want to highlight a few of my own shout outs. So I am a graduate of Elk City, Oklahoma um, Public Schools, where I spent all but one semester of my um, education. And um, so I just want to do a shout out to all the amazing educators in Elk City that helped um, develop who I am today. And that includes my stepmom who was a teacher there. So it's really um, just a great week to think about all the people that helped us become who we are today. Yeah. But in addition to that, we have some amazing educators in the Shawnee Mission School District. And there's not enough time in this podcast to talk about all of them, but I pulled just a few highlights for myself. So one is Travis Gatewood at Shawnee Mission South. He's just one of the most positive people I've ever been around in my life. And you know, he spent some time thinking he wanted to be a school administrator. So he got his degree and he, um, we hired him here at the center and he worked as a coordinator. And after a couple of years, I remember the conversation in my office where Travis was like, I have to go back to the classroom. Like, that's just where I belong is with kids. And I had so much respect for that conversation. It was really hard for him, but the amazing things he does with kids every single day is just really, um, it, it's inspiring for me. Um, if you haven't met Mr. Tripp at Horizons, he's the art teacher there. This guy's been teaching in Shawnee Mission for 44 years. That's impressive. 
it is. And so I walked in, the first time I walked into his classroom, he was like, grab a, grab a canvas, grab some art. And I go, uh, I am not an artist. <laughs> and he said, everybody's an artist yeah. in my room. And he made me feel so That's amazing. Awesome. So That's awesome. He is really awesome. In addition, Linda James at Blue Jacket Flint, 40 years as an elementary teacher in Shiny Mission. So cool. Uh, her principal told me yesterday, she is absolutely amazing. Yeah, Michelle. bless her for 40 years with elementary. That's a long time, wow. right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, some of the behind the scenes that you just don't really see, Mike Husky is a painter for us. And you think a painter, but think about our schools. Think about all the painting that happens in all of our classrooms and the bright paint, the, you know, the colors that make you want to be there. And Mike's been working for the district for 40 years also, so really cool. That's incredible. So that's just to mention a few. Again, I don't have enough time today to mention all of them, but those were the few highlights I wanted to throw out Yeah, there. A, and a couple for me, just really quick. So y shout out to my parents. They were both educators, so I probably got influenced early on in my life to come into this into this space as well. So shout out to them. You know, um, one teacher I want to mention, I, I visit a lot of buildings um, and, and stop by a number of classrooms. There's one classroom I always stop by every time I go to China Mission East, and it's um, Steve Apier's classroom. He's a science teacher at East, at East. He was my mentor when I came to Shiny Mission 18 years ago, and um, he, he's just been an, an incredible, he was an incredible mentor for me early on in my career and, and still a friend today. So just, you know, always like to stop by and see Steve and, and chat with him, see the great things going on in his chemistry classroom. So, and then beyond just, you know, the teachers and, and the work that they do, but a lot of our teachers also do a lot of other things, right? Coach and sponsor and a number of different things. So um, a, a couple of our head coaches that have put in some incredible time in the district, both as, as teachers and coaches, Cody Fothergill, who's a boy swim and dive over at Shawnee Mission North, starting uh, year 26 as, as head coach. He teaches business there. Todd Reed, baseball coach at West, is starting year 24. He's a social studies teacher. Uh, JJ Wanamaker over at South, who, who coaches track and field and cross country, uh, starting year 16, uh, teaches science. Mike Cooper, uh, 43 years at, at between Shawnee Mission South and Northwest as track coach. He's, he's no longer teaching, but did, did so in the district. And then uh, Sean Hare over at, over at East as well, boys basketball coach and, and a PE teacher. He's starting year 27. So just crazy to think about the, the time and effort uh, that they put in in the classroom but then also supporting our students in those other avenues as well right so. and so much time away from their own families so just thank you to all the amazing am educators that are spending time speaking of am amazing educators we have a couple that are going to join us today we got a couple good ones so yeah. i think it's time that uh, we spend some time chatting with abby allen and jill johnson and so really excited to to uh, hear your hear hear from you guys as well and uh, welcome, welcome. Glad you guys are here. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so much. <laughs> yeah. Jill, um, why don't you start and just give us a little brief um, background of your Shawnee Mission time. Absolutely. This is my 17th year teaching in Shawnee Mission. It's the only district I've ever been in and I don't see myself ever leaving. Well, until I retire, obviously. <laughs> I teach uh, secondary math. I've taught at the middle school level and the high school level. Um, and I also serve as our NEA Shawnee Mission President. Um, and currently this year I'm at Shawnee Mission East, but I've been at many different schools throughout the district. Awesome. Abby? Um, I'm a second year teacher. I teach kindergarten at Rose Hill Elementary. Um, I grew up in Olathe, so not too far from here. My parents and my sister was an educator and my grandma was an educator, so it's kind of the only thing I've ever known, but I'm loving it so much. Well, I just must say, knowing what your parents do, I'm really glad you chose Shawnee Mission. <laughs> completely, <Thank you. laughs> completely agree. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, so Abby, I'm going to start with you. Tell me why you chose to be a teacher. Oh, man. I feel like it stems from a lot of things. I, I don't want to shout out my parents too often, but I feel like they're the stem of it. I grew up going to the same elementary school that my mom worked at, so... I saw her in the hallways. I got to go up her, to her room for, you know, bring your kid to work day. And I just watched her often and I watched her build those relationships. I got to high school and my father was my own teacher and he was my coach. So I also got to watch him build those relationships with those kids. I watched my older sister go through college and do the same exact thing. So I kind of in the back of my mind, I was like, oh yeah, that's kind of always something I, I would like to do. And my, I, had, I mean, 
I grew up going to an in-home daycare, so that lady, her name is Linda Flanders, and she's still doing it today at 77 years old, and she has my two little nieces all day. That right there, that woman knew I wanted to be like with the younger kids. Um, and you know, she's not like a licensed teacher or anything, but she just loved them so much and she loved all of us so much and taught us so much. So I was like, oh yeah, I wanna go into teaching, maybe because of my family, but I wanna teach the littler kids because of that woman right there. Awesome. Jill, how about you? <laughs> so I think just early on as a child, I loved pretending to be a teacher in my own house, um, had, a, had a chalkboard mm -hmm. and I would do math problems on it and teach my friends and my stuffed animals um, and so I, I just always loved teaching math to people even if they didn't want to hear about it um, but then in um, in college I had to work for the college to keep my scholarship at Truman State University and um, I chose to be a peer tutor for college algebra and the the students were so grateful and I just felt like I was able to to get to them on another level and teach them math a way that they had, hadn't been taught before. And to see those aha moments from them was so exciting. It, it gave me so much energy and I wanted to do it again, so. That's awesome, that's awesome. You know, you guys just mentioned kind of some, some early experiences that led you into the education field. Um, I want you to think about your time here in Shawnee Mission. So, you know, we've got a variance of time here between you guys, but who has been, um, maybe someone who's had a really big Im impact or influence on your career so far here in Shawnee Mission? Oh man, I'm, for me it's my principal hands down, Jen Duke at Rose Hill. I could get like emotional talking about her. She has just brought me in with open arms and first year teaching is hard, teaching kindergarten is hard <laughs> and I have just felt the utmost support from her and I can go to her for everything and like I said earlier I'm a watcher so I'm watching her in the hallways and I'm kind of like I want to be like you kind of when I you know get into my later years she's kind of making me look into the admin things and um, I want to be in the classroom for as long as I can but um, yeah that she's amazing and someone who I look up to immensely so much and I know I could go f to anything for her. Shout That's out awesome. to Jen Du. Yeah. Yeah. She's amazing. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> all right, Jill, how about you? So uh, for about all but two years that I've been teaching in Chinese Mission, I have had a co-teacher or another adult in my room, and I have learned so much from every co-teacher that I've ever had. I love having another person in that room to, to bounce ideas off of for them to watch me and tell me things that I can do better for me to, to learn from them. And so I have a few shout outs um, just for, a co I've, I've co-taught with a lot of different people and a few that are currently at Trail Ridge, uh, Stacey McFadden and Bill Crosby. Um, my current co-teacher, Gabby Kolker um, at Shawnee Mission East. And then I've just, there's been so many throughout the years that have come and gone and have retired and that kind of thing. Um, and I love being around that community, being around those people who can help me become a better teacher. Um, I'd also say though the students, the students really influence me because they will tell you when they don't understand something or when they think it's not important for them to be learning it. Why is this important? How am I gonna use this in my daily life? So that challenges me to be a better teacher, to figure out, okay, how are they gonna use this in their daily life? What is the underlying lesson that I'm trying to, to teach them, mm -hmm. so. So do either of you have great advice for the kid that's sitting out there watching you or watching any of the great teachers that we have that might want to be a teacher? Oh man, I would say get in the classroom when you can. Um, Hands-on experience is always the best and I wish I did more of that um, when I realized I really wanted to be an educator. So, you know, go up to your favorite teacher and as you compliment them, ask if you can watch them in the room. Go help out the kids and when you get more involved with the kids, it becomes so special and whether you're into the older kids or the younger kids there's something so special about all of them so the more i think they realize how fun the kids are and the relationships you can build that that will give them good help i think that's great advice the best experience that i had i worked for a year as a para mm -hmm. um, while i was working on some certification and it was the most valuable experience yeah more so than even my student teaching i would say it was yes. great jill anything you would add 
Is, and this is for people that are wanting yes. to become? Those, I mean, right. You know, what would you tell maybe someone thinking about being a teacher in Shawnee Mission? I think it's the most rewarding job that you could ever have. When you help spark that joy of learning, it's incredible. And it's a very challenge. It can be a very challenging profession, but the rewards are, are amazing. They totally make the challenge worthwhile. Sh shameless plug from the friendly HR guy that's always looking for, you know, uh, teachers because we need teachers. Um, for any of those students who are listening in today, we have a teacher education program in all of our high schools. Uh, if you're curious about wanting to become a teacher, curious about what that is, enrolling in that teacher education program would be a, a great step and get you some of those experiences and allow you to work with some of those kids. and then maybe see where that career path takes you. So again, shameless plug from... Dr. Higgins, I am so not surprised you just threw that in there, but I'm glad you did. Yeah, thank you. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, you know. did. I love that we've got some students in, at, at East that are helping out in math classrooms and they've been getting so excited when they work with a younger student and they start understanding it and and it's just been great to see that. Excitement in a math class. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> hey, you, know. you gotta come to mine. It's, <laughs> it's like a show. <laughs> um, Abby, real quick. Yes. So I've seen this new TikTok floating <laughs> out there. Tell us a little bit about the Rose Hill TikTok and the why. <laughs> the Rose Hill TikTok, yeah, it was just kind of something where Jen and I kind of met over the summer and she was like, hey, I, I know you like doing these and I know you like kind of performing. Um, would you want to take something like this over? And I was like, absolutely. Like, this sounds like my jam. And she was just like, okay, tell our story. It's just kind of what she told me. And she was like, there's no limitations, you know, just go tell our story. And I was like, okay. And so, yeah, it just kind of started off with doing such a fun little like Barbie TikTok with Jen and that getting you know some attention and then kind of slip it into like oh I can show our monthly pep assemblies in the cute way to show that we have just a fabulous school community you know showing all the different languages we speak at Rose Hill that's an awesome one and then we get you know pop culture involved like our Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift one <laughs> like I have one I'm gonna film tomorrow about when's it appropriate to play holiday music because that is also just a right now yeah right, right now, now <laughs> after Thanksgiving um, it will get people excited but I will say since starting it kids you know and I teach kindergarten so I don't see the fifth grade wing often I don't see the sixth grade wing often but those kids are coming up to me wanting to be in it and wanting to be involved in it and yeah. that just puts like the biggest smile on my face because that's what I wanted I wanted to bring you know Rose Hill and the community together and so they come up to me all the time when can I be in one like when can we do a dance and learn it and <laughs> so it's so exciting and my kindergartners especially are like can we record a song and put it on the TikTok like they love all of that so I'm glad you know, kids are seeing it these days. They're on social media. Parents are on social media, right. and TikTok's one of them. So if we can get a message out pretty easily, we thought it was going to be TikTok. And oh, yeah. so I'm just kind of taking a fun twist with it as well. <laughs> that's, um, and that's the whole goal of this podcast also is to tell your story. So I mm -hmm. commend you guys for going out of the box a little <laughs> bit and starting something new and trying something new. And it's been fun watching. And I, I love following as well. So. We can get you in one if you want. I'm all about it. I'm, like, I'm going gonna, gonna to search this up. Yes, this it's is pretty good. Me excited yeah. Shout out to Rose Hill <laughs> Elementary yeah. on TikTok. Well, while we're talking about it, Shawnee Mission South, the video production team also has has a TikTok, so if you're not following Ooh. them, you should follow okay. them as well. Yeah. Yes. Um, I want to thank you both so much for joining us. I know it's time away from your classroom <laughs> and time away from um, your students, and sometimes that means more work for you. So thank you for taking the time. We really appreciate it. Oh, thanks you're for welcome. having us. Yeah, yeah, I was very excited. Yeah, I want to <laughs> remind everyone that new episodes drop every two weeks, so we'll see you again in a couple of weeks here. Um, we're lo always looking for ideas, always looking for extra followers, so um, if you know somebody that hasn't watched Shiny Mission Mic'd Up, encourage them to join and maybe watch you. Yes. I can maybe get some <laughs> Rose Hill followers and some Shiny Mission East followers. Absolutely. <laughs> Speaking of our next episode, right. um, we always like to give a little preview. So what are we talking about in a couple of weeks? So if you'll recall, when we started the podcast, we said we were going to share amazing stories about Shiny Mission, but we we're also going to share some information. So the next one's going to be a little bit different. We're going to take a uh, spin on attendance and why it's important to be in attendance every single day at school. 
and um, this national problem around chronic absenteeism, which is a concern for us here in Shiny Mission. So we're going to be talking about that. Perfect. Well, hopefully uh, you guys will all tune in for that very important conversation. <laughs> as we wrap up today, a um, couple shout outs. As always, thanks to Logan DeAngelis for the music on the podcast, to the communications team for all your guys' work. A shout out again to all the the teachers and support staff, everyone who's working in our classrooms. The work that you guys do is so vitally important to the success of each and every one of our kids. So again, National or American Education Week, we got to shout out our educators. So thank you guys again. Um, I want to add to that too, all the people behind the scenes that do so much work to support our classrooms every single day. Absolutely. So I don't want to forget them here. The quote I pulled specifically, Educators are the stars that make us all sparkle and shine. And I don't know <laughs> who the author is, but I just want to say thank you all so much for joining us. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Um, and until next time, shine on, shiny mission.